Welcome back to Having a Glow Part 5, and here's where we got to in the previous lesson. Now what we're going to do is talk about these super bright values and problems that they can cause. So let's go ahead and take a look at a different example. Here I have some lightning, and I'm pretty happy with the way the glow looks. I'm ready to render it out. So let's go, let's save this frame, and well I've already saved it out, but why not do it again? And if we import that, we will get a nasty surprise. Let's just take a look. What's happened? It's disgusting. Well, what's happened is all the values have been capped at one because we rendered a JPEG. As we all know, monitors are eight, usually eight to 10 bits and not 32 bits. So this is a problem for us. So how do we fix it? Essentially what we need to do is clamp it. The problem being is if we add a levels adjustment here and simply clamp to output white, we're essentially going to just replicate the problem. Ah, it's the same as what we had before. We can't just cap the values because the result that we're getting looks good because we have super bright blues and we have super bright greens as well. And the red channel is pretty much empty. That's what's causing this vibrant, beautiful glow. But if we cap it, then it's just gonna look like this dull blue color. One handy method for reducing this is S clamp chroma. And at its default, it's clamping a bit too much. So let's just clamp the chroma at a value of one. And then this will render perfectly since the values are not, they're a little bit above one, but they're not extreme. If you don't want to use a third party plugin, let's do this manually by putting lightning into another comp, lightning, call this lightning clamp. And what we can do is duplicate this, add another adjustment layer, call this tint, and let's simply luma map this to that. Now that is essentially solving the problem, but we lost a lot of our saturation there. So a way to claw that back is to add a levels adjustment. And because this is a luma mat, we can simply have it take less of that luminance. And there, we've got some color back and we can save this out as lightning clamp, lightning manual clamp. And there, it's just as we expected. A more intuitive way of doing this is instead of uh, using the luminance, we should actually be using the saturation rather. So let's just solo this here and add shift channels to extract the saturation. The unfortunate thing is though, because we have such saturated values, as soon as the saturation goes above one, they start looping back into negative territory. So unfortunately we can't do that. However, if we were to clamp it first, we could use that. And then instead of using the luminance, let's try using the saturation. Back to our result, let's render this off and see what we get. And because I've already rendered this off, I know what we're gonna get, but let's just do it anyway. What we are going to get is a result that is much more saturated than we were expecting. And the reason is, is because when working in a linear color space, you're sort of deceived into thinking there's not as much saturation, but when you render it off into sRGB, wow, well, my image now looks ridiculously saturated. So to combat that, we would use the same technique we did for the lightning. And I'm gonna take the easy way out and use the plugin, Sapphire Clamp Chroma and I don't want it to clamp it that much. And now we can see the super saturated parts are now desaturated. And if we render this one off, we'll get a much more pleasant result. So I'm just gonna render it. So here is our result without any super bright clamping. And here's our result with. And in the last part of this series, we're going to talk about Glow Flicker and how we can reduce that.